the judgment of the presidential election petition court, which on Wednesday affirmed the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the February 25th presidential and national assembly elections may just be the beginning of another legal firework that is shifting to the Supreme Court. The unanimous ruling of the five-man panel led by Justice Haruna Samani did not only dismiss the consolidated petitions of the PDP, the APM and the Labour Party, but also affirmed the victory of Tinubu as the validly elected president. The court cited the inability of Atiku and Obi to prove the substance of their respective cases. It equally dismissed the third petition filed by the Allied People's Movement for lacking in merit. To have this conversation with us today is a public affairs analyst, Mr. Matthew Oluku. Good morning, sir. Thank you for Good joining Thank us. You. Uh, sorry. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, you're welcome. Let us look at the outcome of the of the PEPC, uh, of course, substantiating the victory of President Paula Ahmed Tinubu. Since Wednesday, the social media have not stopped buzzing over that verdict. Uh, everybody has continued to react, and you know it, ha it has raised a lot of dust. While wow. people, some people are expressing their displeasure, others are on the wing of "I told you so." You people <laughs> should have listened, and you know all that reaction. But however, I would like to get you know your reaction to that verdict. Okay, let me start by saying that. Going by our legal jurisprudence here in Nigeria, it is only the electoral tribunal that has the constitutional right to entertain such case and give judgment. Mm. And let me equally say that judgments are based on facts, evidence. It's not based on emotion and sentiment. Having said that, I think what happened was the inability of the two major petitioners to prove their case to the extent of securing a victory. But I think majorly, the, what did major damage to the petitioners is the umpire, if you ask me. Because I have a feeling that the umpire was not really unbiased in the manner they conducted themselves during the election and even the, in the process of the um, proceedings in the election petition tribunal. Mm. We have a, a situation where in some cases where the petitioner will want some relevant documents to prosecute their case, the umpire may not be willing or may be foot dragging even at, at, at some point when you have a court order compelling the umpire to avail the petitioners some relevant documents and it becomes a difficult thing for them to assess such documents. But again, I think in the judgment itself, um, I, I have a feeling that the electoral petition tribunal should have hold the umpire to account, mm. particularly in the area of religion on their promise. Okay. okay. Because so I understand that one, the electoral act gave the umpire the leverage, liberty, discretionary power. Mm. to determine the mode of transmission of election results. So to that extent, it is within their power to say we are collecting results manually or we are going by electronic transfer um, of results or any other means they may deem necessary. But they decided to say we are going to transmit the election results electronically. And because of the election, they gave, they reneged and gave excuse, excuse of network glitch. That didn't go well with so many Nigerians, including myself, because I have a feel I do not believe that it was a genuine network glitch. But again, I think even if you say it is not, they were not compared by the constitution. If you look at what transpired in Lagos State and Nakwaibo State before governorship election, you agree with me to understand that if you make a guideline, it is incumbent on you to comply with it. Because before the governorship election in Lagos State and Nakwaibo State, I think Lagos State in Lagos State and Nakwaibo State dragged INET to court to say you have you have ruled out your guideline that you are going to transmit the election result electronically. For the purpose of governorship election in Lagos State and Nakwaibo State, they now ask court to compel INET to obey their guideline, and I, and the court sorted with them, 
and give judgment in that direction. So by implication, if INEC had in the governorship election in Lagos and Aquapo State did otherwise, the election would have rendered non and void. Mm. So I think if the stakeholders have envisaged that INEC would renege on the promise of transmitting election results electro electronically, perhaps they would have gone to court to ask her to compel INEC to do so before the election. All right, you talked about the fact that um, certain issues, you know, on the part of the two major petitioners, especially in their inability to be able to present and argue their case out, was what led to the victory, you know, for Tinumbu. But now let me ask you a question. Is there any part of the law that gives provision for a force major, especially in the case of the umpire INEC? What do you mean force major? You are talking about unforeseen circumstances. Yes. You are talking about maybe natural disaster. Yes. Is there and that often happens with uh, maybe multinational companies that is to oil of exploration. Mm. But what we are looking at is, we are talking about you bringing a guideline and you having discretionary power. And within the limit of the power, you have said, I am going to transmit election result electronically. And if actually there was a genuine network glitch, you go to say they could not do otherwise. But I say that personally, I'm not convinced that it was a genuine network glitch. Because so when you talk about force majority, yeah. it is not about whether there is a concerned provision that empowers them to exercise such power. Okay. But if you have a situation that is beyond human control, I don't think it's within your power to address it. So where is the issue of uh, being um, discretional here? When there is no law in the constitution that allows you to seek another alternative when, for instance, as they claim, there was a network glitch? No, the only way you can hold them emphatically is if there was a ruling of court, like I mentioned in the case of Lagos State during the governorship election and Aquaba State, that compels them to say, this is your guideline, you must obey it. Okay. Hence, there is no uh, um, sorry, pronouncement of court. Mm. They can decide to do otherwise because they are still exercising that discretionary power given to them. All right. Because they have the liberty to decide. You could recall that during the electoral um, amendment of the Electoral Act, mm. there was a, at a point, National Assembly was trying to make it look as if you need to revert to National Assembly to determine when and where an area is feasible to um, transmit the election result electronically. Yeah. And the, the Nigerian said no. It's like INEC surrendering their independence to you. Now INEC got the whole independence they needed. And this is where we are. So how was it the fault of the two petitioners, especially when they requested for certain documents and that, that is would have aided personally, their case and they weren't getting that uh, document? That's why personally I'm of the view that the electoral act should be amended. One, I think I totally agree with uh, the position of uh, Adeburua, who said the burden of proof should therefore be removed from the petitioner and placed on the umpire. Because the umpire is the one condu that conducted the election. Yes. He have all the relevant documents. So he should be the one defending and proving that the election was free, fair, and credible and that it substantially meets with the um, electoral act. Mm -hmm. Not what we have currently, where a petitioner will be finding it difficult to get all the relevant documents to pro prosecute his case and trying to prove that the election was not free, fair, and credible. All right. Uh, from the last conversation that you mentioned, you know, your first analysis, taking a word from it, um, part, of the, part of the displeasures that was expressed by Nigerians after the verdict was how that the judges, the paper they were reading from had the APC presidential uh, campaign committee inscribed on it. And people continued to question that, especially on X, on, on social media. And it is part of the query that you, the PDP presidential candidate is taking to Supreme Court with uh, the query he's taking to the Supreme Court, how that, why does that verdict paper have whatever that concerns APC written on it. How do you react to that? Uh, let me not totally affirm that that came from the um, AP courts, um, mm. or rather the presidential election petition tribunal, because what, we're now, what we are hearing is like my words against your words. Because on one hand, we are seeing PDP alleging that the document is having a watermark mm. of. Uh, APC legal team or the presence of the legal team. On the other hand, the legal team of visa president is saying, no, we scanned and 
um, superimpose it on the copy given to us before sharing it among our legal um, team. But what I understand is one, from my experience as a printer and as a graphic artist, I know that normally watermark comes from during production of paper. Mm. And even if you are going through offset printing or digital printing, I may, what I say may be um, printing jargon anyway. You know, in graphics, there's what they call transparency too. In printing too, we call it, call it tone. That is the device or rather the uh, uh, tool used in creating an image or test to be faint. Even if you pass it through the plate making machine, it comes out very faint. And if you play, if you print it on it, you need to uh, raise it um, close to the light mm. for you to so get a, get a very clear view of it. So that is what I mark. I know technology have advanced. Maybe there could be any other way of putting it on paper even after production. But the natural way of doing it, it comes with paper during production. But again, I have not um, had the privilege of seeing the document that had that watermark. Otherwise, I would have been able to do some forensic analysis to understand whether actually it came with the paper during production mm. or it was by post after production. So, so you're saying that, assuming that actually that paper had watermark it, it's from production from, that it would have been from production because there's a possibility yeah. came through, uh, no normally it's supposed to come through production yeah but because of the advancement of technology i'm saying it's not out of place for someone to superimpose mm. any object on printed uh, paper already printed but again if as a printer mm. if i have access to that document i'll be able to examine it and know whether it came with the paper or it was printed on it after production.